Now let's address some of the issues related to validity. And we're going to jump right into just uh, looking at some scales first and understanding a little bit more about what validity is about. So let's be very practical. Let's compare a couple scales, right? So, so this is data um, from a prognostic study um, using the lower extremity measure, which is a 30-item self-report that was developed for hip fracture patients. The Harris Hip Score is a competing scale that's widely popular and was developed by experts, um, primarily orthopedic surgeons and other clinicians. So if we look here at this graph, let's just compare the two scales. We have here's a 100% score on each scale. This is zero. Time is on the uh, x-axis where we have a pre-op score. And you may wonder how you get a pre-op score in a hip fracture patient. Well, essentially, you just ask them to fill out the scale after they're fractured. So the pre-op score is a, is a memory score, so how they remember themselves being or or you know to the best uh, that we can determine and then after they're injured they then complete a self-report scale at each one of these time points so we can see the harris hip score is here in the the solid uh, dots you know the darker score here and then we see the the um, lem or the lower extremity measure here um, and the small dots uh, what do you what do you immediately notice is that the the there's much greater changes in the LEM, especially in the acute and subacute phases of care when we would be uh, wanting to use the instrument. And so then in the Harris Hip score, there's very little change and it's pretty flat really after three weeks. And so essentially if we were trying to document change and especially small increments of change in um, people post hip fracture, we would be much better off to use the lower extremity measure um, than the Harris Hip score. And so, so what we would like to do is, is both of these, um, both of these scales uh, capture the concept or construct of function, because they're asking about functional abilities and patient self-report. But we also are interested in in how their scales perform in terms of um, helping us pick up change clinically, because that's the point of an outcome measure. And so, and so we want it to clinic, clinically, which outcome measures do we choose? And this is, we want the ones that are more responsive or better, better able to document change. And then we also want ones that have meaning to the patient and the caregiver and, and to us, right? And so, and, and the payers, right? So, so we want everybody to think that the scale has relevance, right? And so, so what we're looking for then is comparisons on these items like responsiveness and validity. Um, so responsiveness has to do with how, how well it's going to pick up change. And we're going to use something called the minimal clinically important difference um, to, to determine like how responsive that it might be. And then the other part is what does it mean? Like one scale might appear to be um, you know, measuring function, but it may measure it different than another. And so, so we're really comparing the same, the same thing. And so that's the question of validity. So how do we get at those, those ideas? So the first is, is just to kind of understand the scale itself and read the items. And so here we have um, a typical way items are set up on a scale where the, uh, they're, they're, they're aligned in a hierarchical difficulty. So if we look at these different items. We can see vigorous activities such as running, lifting, heavy objects, participating in strenuous sports. That's the high end of, of activity on this example, which is the SF36 functional component scale. And then the other um, low end of the items is walking one block. And so, so we can see that, that that's the range of difficulty that this item has. So, so people were bed bound, they would, they would have a floor effect on, on this um, scale where not all of them would get a zero if essentially um, the difficulties were more like for patellofemoral patients that are all active and in sports well they would all be scoring either at the top two items on the scale so that would be a ceiling effect all right so so this is an i the, the, these are the types of things you, uh, that make a scale more or less responsive right okay and so and so the other Part of it is you could have more items that were hierarchy listed, so there there'd be greater numbers, or you could also have um, for each item you could have more um, uh, categories. So 
instead of just yes, limited a lot, limited a little, limited not at all, you could have a five point scale. And sometimes there's a zero to 10 scale. So, so the items that they put on the scales make them either more or less responsive. Okay, the other part is, is usually in the reference um, instructions, the, the scale and uh, self-report scales ask the patient to respond to the questions relative to something. And in this case, it's health-related quality of life is the constructor or purpose of the scale. So the attribute they're trying to pick up is how this function relates to their health. So they're not interested in how the function relates to things like, um, you know, how they're uh, unrela you know, unrelated to health, so personality or something like that. Okay, so let's look at another scale. So this is a lower extremity measure. So this is the one we were just talking about that was more responsive than the Harris hip scale. So we can see here, I didn't put all 30 items down, but we can see the items are relatively simple. They don't ask them about to, the construct isn't related to health. It's more, they're just their difficulty in performing the task, period. And so, so this is a functional scale that's independent of their health status. And so we can see too that there's five items on the um, on each five categories for each item, so that has the potential to be more responsive. And it turned out in the comparison to the Harris Hip Scale, it was. So that's a good thing for us. This is a very very popular scale. It's called the Lower Extremity Functional Scale. Um, that's widely used, and we can see it has some of the same attributes of both of the other scales, where there's. Uh, 20 questions, they're hierarchically ranked, and that there's a, a, a Likert scale with five different uh, categories uh, for each um, for each item, and that the construct or attribute is the difficulty that they're having um, with their lower associated with their lower limb problem or because of their lower limb problem. So again, it doesn't mention pain specifically, so it's independent of pain but it, it is about um, their lower limb problem, um, however that would be defined. So, so some things we're just learning about is without any statistics, just picking up a scale and understanding what exactly is the construct of the scale. Are the questions relating to pain? Are they relating to health? Are they independent of both of those? Um, how is that defined? And what are the items and, and how many are there? Um, the more there are, the, the possibility that is that that's more sensitive. The, the consequence is that usually um, they have to be, uh, it takes longer if there's more items. So, so some of the considerations um, you want, normally you're kind of assessing a rehabilitation component or component of health condition. And what you want to know is, is what are these things called psychometric properties? Because they reflect after you've kind of had this kind of um, uh, kind of general assessment and, and read the scale, you can also think about, you know, what are some of the characteristics of how it actually performs in patients. Um, and so to understand how they, they develop the questions and assure that they have the right content or attributes that capture those abstract concepts like kinesiophobia or whatever, we're going to um, review um, some different types of validity that, that helps develop those, those abstract concepts. So we'll do that next.